My so 26. I'm so fucked up from this situation that I don't care to make a throwaway. Whatever. I'll delete it if I need to. I have met my so late last year, and we started dating in January. We've been together since then, and COVID has really accelerated our relationship to the point where I moved in out of necessity. I also got a job promotion around this time, so things were looking really great, and we got along really well, with a fight here and there that was relatively easy to squash. When I met her, I was extremely aware of her bipolar being a major factor of her personality and the way she carries herself. She warned me about the ups and downs of it, and I've seen first in some of the things she does when she is both depressed and manic. I've helped her deal with her depression and work through her mania before with no issues. One of the things she has explained to me about her mania is that, when it gets extremely bad, she will often have memory loss and do things that are out of character. I accepted this as long as they are in huge betrayals or anything life-altering to which he agreed. To preface this situation, we consider ourselves pretty free-spirited and poly in some aspects, with rules communicate when you plan to do something ahead of time, make sure we both agree it's someone we're fine with prioritized reasons, etc. due to COVID. We've been only spending a lot of our free time at the house of my friend and his wife, who get regularly tested. My soul and these two have gotten along really well. Back before COVID started, we invited the two of them over, and a friend of theirs tagged along, I'll name him, who at the time, we both kind of took liking to. My soul had said a lot of the same interest, and he was a relatively chill person, so that night, when everyone left, he stayed, and we ended up fooling around. Nothing too serious or anything on his end, searching and making out from both of us. He didn't have penetrative sex with anyone. But my soul and I got intimate as usual. He left the next day, and things seemed to be fine. A few months after that we come to find out that my friend had a talk with Sans, was bragging about having sex with so, and that if he wanted, could have so whenever he wanted, and may should say thousand, eight hundred twenty-three would be cool with it. Both my soul and I were absolutely fucking disgusted. To hear this, it was as if he viewed it as some sort of fucking conquest or some achievement. Around this time, too, he would follow around my soul like a puppy dog whenever we were at our friend's house. He's renting a room out there to the point where my soul and my friend had to talk with him and tell him to knock the shit out, because it was both gross and pathetic, seemed to take this really tough, feeling like he was a terrible person and promising to make amends. Things didn't change much, though he was kind of full mask off doubling down on sexist statements and being a general, annoying douch in his general conversations with others. My so I made it a point to openly roll our eyes at him. This brings me to the past couple of days. My so had been feeling rather manic, seemingly much more so, a few days ago than she was the last day. Since she was feeling a little more lucid, she decided to stay over at our friend's place and hang out with his wife, with the intention to stay at the spare bedroom and to come back the next day, to which I was totally fine with them, but I asked her to get a good night's sleep, as although she was feeling less manic. I still wanted to see her work of getting more sleep to feel even better for work on Tuesday. She agreed. I wake up this morning to text upon text from both myself and my friends, stating that she had a seizure and that she was up all night and got no sleep. They called 911 and sent her to the hospital. I texted myself and asked what she needed. She replied back, was at the house and that she wanted me to grab them for her. I pop over to my friend's house and look around the house dot dot dot, but find absolutely no bag, no nothing. I look literally all over. The only place I haven't checked is his room, so I knock. Nobody's in there. Go in. Her things were all over the fucking room, clothes strewn upon his bed, a sack of books related to a passion I sell, and I are intimate knots. My switch controller neatly placed upon his computer desk, but no switch. That is completely gone. Missing, and she has no clue where it is. Her weed ball that she smoked out of place on the end table. Things of hers literally all over the fucking place. I feel extremely weirded out by this, so I call her, and I am like, dot dot dot, why is all of your stuff all over his room? 
She tells me that she decided to go up and confront him because she was tired of having to deal with his bullshit every single time she's home. My friend is downstairs on a company call, but he breaks away to check in with me. He says that he and his wife went to bed early, but that she planned to try to make amends with because he was tired of all of the drama, from my understanding, until my friend and his wife had went to bed. My cell and for watching YouTube videos, and then ended up going upstairs, where she was up all night, before seizing and being taken to the hospital. My friend showed me the text messages from to him, and it showed saying that me and So's friendship is on the mend. I'm confused, pissed, annoyed and crossed out all at once at this point, but get a call from her, stating that she's been discharged, and to go get her. I grab whatever stuff I can scavenge across his room. Go and pick myself up, and ask her about what happened. She stated that she didn't cheat on me, but I know it looks really bad. I chimed back, stating, dot, 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 how would you have even known? You were really manic last night, right? Would you have even remembered if you cheated on me? She said she couldn't talk about it anymore. It's also worth noting that she's petrified of me leaving her. She's stated this multiple times before and has not made it a secret of how important my presence is in her life, to which I fully believe her dot dot dot, so it's possible she may have been lying about what happened last night, maybe out of fear, I think. I don't know. I drive back home so that I can get her into our bed and get her some sleep. But she ceases again, and I call for 911. She's currently back in the hospital. Closer to our apartment, and I have no way to be able to contact her or see her, no visitors. Her parents are on their way up from states away to see about taking care of her. But I am somewhat ashamed to say, both anxious for her health and disgusted by her, on the off chance that she did decide to sleep with this guy. For my post is not to determine whether she actually cheated on me or not. There's an equal chance, in my opinion, whether she did or not. But more to ask about the morality of this situation. Do I have any right to be pissed about this? I fully accepted herself, her bipolar, and everything it brings, but provided she actually did fuck this guy. Is it morally okay for me to be as pissed as I am? I feel simultaneously like a horrible person for being so fucking angry and justified, because this is probably the worst form of betrayal. Just a fucking whirlwind of bad emotions that I don't know how to currently deal with anger, Betrayal, disgust, annoyance, confusion, you name it, and I just need some help processing how to deal with this whole situation. But too long, don't read. Girlfriend with manic bipolar may have slept with someone we mutually hate during a fit of mania last night. She is currently in the hospital dealing with it, but I have no idea how to process these feelings. Do I forgive her? I have no idea. Edit, it's completely fair that people are assuming now I'm putting more priority than did she cheat aspect to this situation, but I should clarify that this post is intended for advice on how to deal with the fallout with this situation. I'm doing absolutely no self-care while also making calls and being in touch with everyone I can to try to help her, but I definitely am going to need help with how to process this when the dust settles because it's a lot to deal with emotionally. I apologize to anyone who perceives me to be cold and selfish during this time, which I completely understand. My partner is bipolar one. We've been together for four years. He was undiagnosed and unmedicated for the first two years of our relationship. I loved him, but he put me through hell those first two years. Depressive episodes where he wouldn't leave his house for days, and I had to bang on his door to make sure. He was alive. Manic episodes with drug binging. He couldn't keep a job. After he had a one night stand with a friend high on many drugs, I gave him an ultimatum. Go to therapy. Get diagnosed. Get medicated if you feel comfortable. But I will not stay with you. This continues. I'll tell you what I told him. Wapella is not an excuse to lie, to cheat, or to be callous of other people's feelings. Your so is using her Wapella as an excuse, and honestly, it's insulting to everyone out there living their lives with Bapala, being faithful and kind, that you so uses it as an excuse to be unfaithful and straight-up mess. My partner now has a salary job. He's been teaching for two years now. He takes 450 meg of his medication twice a day. He runs six miles every other day, 
at a fifth and thirty-second pace. He writes poetry. He makes music. He's killing. He's faithful and kind. He goes to therapy every other week. He's happier than he's ever been because he took responsibility for his mental health. And there's a difference between taking control of your mental health and letting it control you what your soul is doing. Of course, my partner still has manic episodes. You can feel them coming on. He knows what to avoid when he's manic. I'll also point out that bipolar episodes can be exacerbated by drugs. I'm not super anti-drugs or anything. But his even weed affects people with bipolar, especially if they're already taking medications. But don't know I say all of this to say. Forget your so's mental health issues. Is this how you want to be treated? Will she take responsibility for her actions and make steps to handle her mental health? I'm not an expert on bipolar disorder, but from what you said here, it doesn't seem like your so's mental health is well managed at all. You two seem pretty codependent on each other, and you both need some healthier coping mechanism. You're fixating on her biggest fear right now. Oh, she's petrified at you leaving her. I mean, instead of focusing on what's healthiest for both of you. Your one priority should be getting her appropriate physical and mental health care, since she's currently in crisis. Next, you need to get your own house in order and see someone about your mental health. After those things are in progress and your support systems are in place, you can start to worry about your relationship. Yo, I'm bipolar, so I know the territory a bit. Meanwhile, there was a girl I went to college with who the more severe form of bipolar, and at one point she had an insane manic episode that culminated in her faking a hate crime and getting arrested for false report. Mania's a real peach. I knew her fairly well and kept in contact afterward because I still considered her to be a good person because she was honest and remorseful. Anyway, my take is that, of course, you are allowed to be mad and hurt. Even if philosophically you believe an incapacitated manic person shouldn't be held accountable for their actions, it's up to you to decide where the line is in your own relationships. It doesn't matter if she's innocent by reason of insanity. If this transgression is something you can't move on from, that is fine. You deserve a relationship you're comfortable in. Do you think something like this could happen again? Will you ever be able to trust her? Has this completely changed your view of her? That is all for you to decide. This isn't some sort of moral court of law. This is your life, and if you can't move on from this, then that decision is your right to make mental illness be damned.